Ant-Man is Marvel's newest addition to the MCU, and this film stars Paul Rudd, Michael Douglas, and Evangeline Lilly, and tells the story of Scott Lang. This guy's a thief. He's a lowlife. He has a daughter he cares a lot for, but he's just a criminal. He's extremely good at breaking into people's houses and stealing stuff, and one day, Michael Douglas, Hank Pym, takes note of this and decides to try to recruit him to become his successor as Ant-Man because there's some pretty serious business going down, some end of the world type stuff, of course, that needs to be stopped. It's really hard to believe this now because of the world we live in with entertainment, but when I was a kid, I wondered if we'd ever see a Spider-Man live action film. Now we're getting Ant-Man. I mean, we're getting the weirdest of the weird, the smallest, quite literally, of the small of popular superhero characters. Guys, guess what? Marvel did it again. Ant-Man is a lot of fun as a movie. I laughed my ass off consistently throughout this film. Paul Rudd nails it as Scott Lang. He is such a likable addition to the MCU. I loved his portrayal of this character, Michael Douglas. Oh my gosh. To hear his voice be the voice of Hank Pym was such a delight. He was fantastic in this movie. Not just because it's Michael Douglas and he's talented and it's so nice to see him in a good movie, but they gave Hank Pym such a good backstory. The film's focus on Michael Douglas and his daughter as portrayed in the film by Evangeline Lilly really added a lot of great depth to this movie and I thought it really took it in a good direction. And whenever it needed that humor, Michael Pena, holy shit. Every word out of that guy's mouth in this movie, perfection, comedy gold. He was just rocking it. He was nailing every line. Another thing I must recommend, and really surprisingly, because usually I don't give a crap about this, the 3D really added something to this movie because the sequences where he shrunk down to size and they blurred out the background so deeply and the focus was on this little man running through a bathtub or down a drainage pipe or underneath the ground. The 3D really worked for these sequences and added something that I don't think you could actually achieve in 2D. And that's rare for me to say because usually 3D just comes off as a gimmick to me that isn't actually necessary for the film, but in this movie it added something. Let's talk about those action sequences because by far they're the most entertaining aspect of the movie visually. They are stunning to look at. There isn't a single aspect of the CGI in this film that you're like, CGI, not real. And I think a lot of that is due to the photorealistic style of some of this CGI. The fact that it really just looked like a small man running along these surfaces. They did a terrific job with that CGI in those sequences. And without spoiling anything, I like the way this film tied in to other Marvel movies. They addressed the thing that people are always asking, well, why don't they just call the Avengers? Because the Avengers are amazing. Well, the Avengers can't always do everything. Sometimes you need a small guy to do a small thing. And this movie was knowingly and willingly small scale, which is perfect because its hero is also small scale. And I love the fact that this movie didn't need to be some big bloated extravaganza with tons of stuff just flying all over the place. It understood that it was a smaller film. It's not a flawless movie though. This movie went through a lot of problems in its production. Edgar Wright was the original director of this movie. And you can definitely tell they used a lot of his ideas, especially in regards to the action sequences. If you go back and watch Edgar Wright's original test footage, it looks a lot like the way they handled the action scenes in this movie. So I'm really glad that in the credits they did give him story credit. That's a really good thing they did there. But I do wish that he had helmed this movie because I think he could have brought a lot more energy, more snappy cuts, and I just feel like he could have brought something to this film that wasn't there. And one of the biggest issues with the movie is its structure. In the first 20 minutes or so, it does feel a little broken. It feels like a couple different movies are happening at once. One's very funny, one's more serious, and sometimes that balance isn't always perfect. Also, there are certain characters in the movie that just feel like plot devices. For one, Scott Lang's daughter in the film. You know what they're gonna do with her, and when they do, you're like, I was expecting that. Also, the main villain in the movie, he was a big evil guy who was really good at being evil, and he liked to do evil things like shrink lambs without feeling a shred of guilt. And his eventual transformation felt forced. It just, it didn't really work for me. I think as a villain, he wasn't a very compelling character. They tried to give him a good backstory, and in some aspects it worked, but it just was overshadowed by how funny and awesome the movie was, which is a good thing because this movie is funny. The fact that Marvel was able to take such a strange superhero story, a smaller one, a lesser known one, and make it as entertaining as this film was, really paid off for me. I had a ton of fun watching Ant-Man. Paul Rudd nailed it as the character. Michael Pena was brilliant. Michael Douglas and Evangeline Lilly were excellent. I loved the look of the movie. The action set pieces were really well done. I just felt that some of the structure in regards to balancing that humor and the thrills sometimes didn't always work. A few characters came off like plot devices and the main villain just wasn't really 
that impressive to me. But I had a ton of fun with this movie, and I'm going to give Ant-Man a B+. Also, no spoilers, there is a mid credit scene and an after credit scene, so be sure to stay for both of them because they're pretty friggin' cool. And really quick, I got this awesome poster at tonight's screening, and that is all because there was a charity group there, Superheroes for Kids in Ohio. These guys dress up like superheroes and they visit sick kids in the hospital. They do charity work for kids. It's such a cool thing. These guys were at the screening tonight dressed up like all these characters. It was awesome. There's a link in the description below for their charity work if you want to donate anything to them. Thank you so much, guys, as always, for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.